predicted before I left for America that upon returning home to the UK, my suitcase would be full of nothing but books. That prediction was not only 100% accurate, it was also extremely heavy. This is the Great American Book Haul. Hello my bookworms, it is Erica here, and yes, I'm finally getting around to this. I know I've been back in the country for a week now, but I've been down and out with a sinus cold, so I'm here now, and I also just had the rest of my books delivered today, so we're getting into this book haul. Before I dive into it, I'm going to say this and this alone. There are certain things I missed about America. My family, my friends, my fluffy, fluffy dog. But the thing I think I missed the most was Barnes & Noble. Well, you know, underneath the list of, you know, people and animals. Being here in the UK and having nothing but water stones where everything is paperback and they don't have half of the books I even want to begin with, I have realized I have taken Barnes & Nobles for granted in the past, even though I hate the drive there. I still hate, you know, that 40 minute drive, but they have a lot of books that I want and in hardback. This book haul is going to be broken into three segments. One. Purely academic books. Two, standalone novels. Three, the series books, or, you know, the completion of my series books. As you can see, my bookshelves are full to their capacity. There, I had to use the top of that little one there, and everything's full at the bottom. I'm running out of room, so let's get into this book haul. To begin the purely academic book part, I bring you The Essential Hand Guide to Victorian Etiquette by Professor Thomas E. Hill. Next up is Bedlam, London and It's Mad by Katherine Arnold. And this is a previously owned book, so is the Victorian one, clearly. And, you know, I just, I wanted to bring it back because in my story, I might revisit Bedlam. That brings us to Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Suzanne Kane. This book I did buy in America, kind of on a whim, and it just, it, I like the whole psychological stuff, and, you know, being an introvert myself, or at least so this book tells me, it really did intrigue me, so I did buy it, and it was only for $3, so what did I care? The Endless Universe, Beyond the Big Bang, Rewriting Cosmic History. Previously owned, I'm very fascinated by space and astronomy. I'm clearly a very nerdy person. It's okay. I enjoy it. And then the final book in my purely academic section is Stephen Hawking, A Briefer History of Time. Previously owned, if you can't tell by the cover, I really enjoy reading his work, and it's just, it's all so fascinating. On to the good stuff, the standalone novels, and this is going to consist of, you know, like the first books and series that, you know, I don't have all of the other books. And the first one I'm going to show you is The Sea of Shadows by Kelly Armstrong. Supposedly, this is supposed to be a starter novel in a series book. I'm not too entirely sure. At least that's what I read on Goodreads. And this is a hardback. I bought it in Barnes & Noble like everything else. And the covers just look so pretty because I have no idea what else it's about. The Ring of the Crown by Melissa Delacruz. Again, no idea what it's about. I think it's kind of historical but contemporary fiction at the same time if that makes sense. I'm not exactly sure. Like it takes place in the future but it has elements of the past. At least that's what I'm getting from it because I'm currently reading it. This is also a hardback, and the only thing I have to say, I'm not usually one for showing, like, covers and all that, or, you know, beyond the dust jacket, but that looks so pretty. And then you have, bam, look at that. All those flowers. Or squirrelies. A Separate Country by Robert Hicks. This is a historical fiction. It was on the bargain sale, so I got it for $5. I couldn't complain. It's a hardback, and I, you know, I love my historical stuff, so... The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. This one was previously owned. I did bring back a lot of my classic books because I love going back and rereading them. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Casey. This is previously owned, if you could not tell by the damage done to the cover, but this is one of my all-time favorite books, and I've missed it tremendously. George Orwell's 1984. This is previously owned and possibly one of my all-time favorite books, hands down. If you guys haven't read it, get on that, because this shit's happening. Asylum by Madeline Rooks. I want to say if I mispronounced that, I'm so sorry, but this book, hands down, 
creepy and it looked awesome so I had to buy it and there's pictures in here. Pictures! More pictures! Completely and utterly disturbing pictures. I'm excited for this. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Again, purchased in America. Another wonderfully awesome hardback book. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Previously owned, clearly, but still, again, favorite of the classics. Uh, I love all my classics, I can't lie. Killer Takes All by Erica Spindler. This book was previously owned. I had a lot of her books still left over, but of all of her, you know, crime books, this one was my all-time favorite. It's the one that got me hooked on her, and it's just, it's very twisted, and I love it. It's also extremely damaged, but hey, that proves the love I have for it. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Previously owned, awesome book. If you guys haven't read it, I didn't have to read this in high school, but I was always intrigued by it, and then I read it, and I loved it. Like, I do all things. A Secret History by Donna Tart. No idea what this book is even about, but it was a buy one, get one half off when I bought that quiet book. And it's a psychological thriller, and I'm trying to get more into those because they've always intrigued me, but I've just I've never found a good one, so I'm starting off with this. Do not fail me. The last and final standalone novel I have is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. That's a long title, but look how pretty! Again, no idea what this book was about when I purchased it. It just, it looked really pretty. That brings us up to speed with the series books, and I'm going to start that off with a great big bang. The Grisha Trilogy by Leah Bardigo. All three are hardback. I have all three. This is the newest book out, and I have the exclusive collector's edition, and I bought it the day before it was supposed to be a recent. It was an early release, and I happened to be in Barnes & Noble at that time, and I had to have it. I did do a giveaway on my paperback of Shadow and Bone that has been sent off. I had confirmation that it was received, so I hope you enjoy that book. I did purchase three books off of Books Depository right before I left, and they were just delivered today. And the one book I got was the final installment to The Immortal Instruments. These are falling on me. But yeah, as you guys can tell, City of the Heavenly Fire is massively huge, which is what I was trying to avoid. But all Barnes & Noble sold was the hardback edition, and well, yeah. The biggest plus side to this is looking at how huge it is. It would be a massive little book, and they can lay down all nice and neat in my shelves. The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. I said I would bring this trilogy back, and I did. I did have to repurchase my Hunger Games in hardback because mine mysteriously, you know, went missing. So I have all three of them again. I'm very happy. I'm very excited. I might reread them because, well, just because I want to. As you guys know, I thoroughly enjoyed The Tea Rose by Jennifer Donnelly. And the last two books I purchased online were her continuing and final book of the Rose trilogy, which is The Winter Rose and The Wild Rose. Yes, they're not the same size, and yes, it does bother me. I will, however, tolerate it because I love these books, and if these two are as good as this one, I might just, you know, hunt down the hardback editions. And as promised, I did purchase the hardback edition of Allegiant by Veronica Roth, and I did read it while I was over there, although I finished it here in the UK. It took me a while. The last of the books that I previously owned that I brought back with me is The Bartimus Trilogy by Jonathan Strode. This is, yes, more of like a children's type of story, but I read it when I was, I think, 12, 13, and I really did enjoy it, and it's always that one thing that like sparks my creativity for some unknown reason, and I really want this one in hardback, but I can't find it, and it's super shiny. These are shiny too. The final book of this massive Great American Book Haul is Rebel, which is the final book in the duology of Reboot by Amy Tintera. It's another hardback. I haven't read Reboot yet, but I've been meaning to, but I saw that Rebel was coming out relatively in the time of, I think it was May, so I figured I would just buy it while I was in America, and I did, and now I have to read them. I have a lot of books to read. I need to get on this. That is the end of my Great American Book Haul. If you guys have read any of these books, let me know how it was. I already know how Allegiant ends. The lady at Barnes & Noble spoiled it for me, and then I did finish reading it. As for City of Heavenly Fire, I have seen people post things on Facebook, so again, I know how that ends, even though I haven't read it yet. 
As for everything else, no spoilers, just let me know if it was good or not. And until then, you guys, happy reading. Bye!